to look on a flux model in another video how to install and use it in this video i want to share with you some new workflows for the flux model that bring this on a total different level and make it this incredible powerful tool well let's look first what we have here and this is basic flux model one thing i want to point before we jump to the workflow notice it's no negative prompt if you remember only positive prompt here as well and if you don't know how to install flux for on comfy ui i'll put link down below for you so you can check my previous video where it took step by step and showing where to place all models take it and how it's work the flux it's natively supported in comfy ui so it should be straightforward and very easy with maybe you downloading some models as additional and by the way if you're missing some of those workflows they're incredibly easy to use for example if you go on a flux model you can just take image drag and drop on your canvas and there you go you will have it your um, workflow open for you because the work is embedded inside the image comfy i will read and populate with the nodes well another area what i want to look it is based on comfy ui flux region attention that is unbelievably powerful tool that allowed you so much manipulate with the image um, generations that you can create <laughs> its endless possibilities seriously let me show you the first off if you need workflow links will be down below you can go to this github page and here is a few just take this image same like before just drag and drop this is two different workflows you also can look how they work but i want to share with you some of installations and possible you will run in some of those problems and i will show you how you can um, make it much smoother work for you first of course we're going to drag and drop and right here you can see one of these don't worry it's look like spider web with a lot of stuff here which is okay we'll go over some of this and i will explain how it's work and of course in the end you can create a very stunning result first when you drag and drop possibly some nodes won't, will be in a red color easy way to fix them by going in a manager click on install missing custom nodes which in your case will maybe showing some of those if you don't have it just select and click restart remember you want to reload your server so it is will re-enable those nodes and uh, that was very fast and easy and i did not acquire any problems with this when i run several times already so most likely you won't have any problem with this as well the problem when that occurred when I start working with the models. If we look closer on this workflow, it was nice because they put it where to place some of these um, models. But that is not all models they're using because if you look right here, it's have a different name of the models. I will provide for you link down below so you can go and download it, those models, at least these three models. And you need to place them in specific place. So let me show you where you can put them. If you notice on first right here, it says UNet. And if you look there, um, it says put this in a UNet uh, folder. However, it actually will read them from diffusion folder. So you need to put it in diffusion model in this folder here. Next, we have Flux Hyper. This is a loader. And of course, this is you can download it and put it inside your loras and i just created flux you can put on top if you properly configure it will read all of this for me it just was a little bit separation so i just create subfolder flux and put it this lower model the other ones which have it give me a little bit problem it is a d5 excel and that one can locate it inside the clip directory notice you also have it clip one i similar you should have it at those in these areas um if you don't have it for some reason right here i have it models because i have to provide link for those ones down below but if you don't have it you also have it additional options how you can download them one of the option if you don't share um directory because in my case when i work with my comfy ui here i have it my general model directory 
that accessing to all my other installations. So you can see I have multiple installations or comp UI here, and I don't want to duplicate over and over this model. So I share with this model folder. And in my case, actually, I have it another um, fully working for my production, which uh, is located on my SSD drive to fast load it. Just give you comparison when you loaded this big flux uh, model. In my case, sometimes it can take about 10 to 20 minutes to load it some of this model if I'm going from a normal hard drive and it's cut to about three minutes if I'm going from SSD. It's quite a bit faster in this case. Okay, and right here, of course, we're putting them in a clip, those clip L and other ones. Um, to find this model, you can also access a couple ways. First, you can go in manager if you need it. And if it's not, you have a global installation as said before, click on model manager and just type right here, like clip L, I think, or other ones right there. And it, mine is already installed in yours. You just click and download it and it's well placed in the right place for you. Uh, this is one way. Another one, so you can just copy name of this file type go on Google and search for um, hugging face and you can go to directly to hugging face and download it from there so it's several ways um, for me I actually like to go through hugging face to download the there because that way I can also verify one last time model was updated and I can put it in a specific place where I want it in my shareable directory well let's look how this is specific work this example, if you notice, they have it positioned for each block and it is points X, Y. So you have it at one position. So in dry, dry, uh, dry kind of like area, rectangle area where you can locate it and put it. And this is a uh, information. If you don't know where it's located, I would recommend just create like a red square, green square so you can preview. But general, you can kind of look on this it's a point going from one so it will be zero here and one on the bottom so it's meaning if you want to put it halfway it will be 0 0.5 so it's not necessarily in the pixels because your resolution may be changed um, you may have it more widescreen or tall different it may change but if you're going by numbers 0 0.5 it's middle of that screen it's a little bit better to location then it's how they did here as well notice you have it several uh, prompts you also have it four strings it's not the text box you can convert to the text box but it's just a string input here and you also have it in quarters for the area so you have it three additional there also this is very interesting example because if we spread just a little bit over you can see how it works so we have it just one string which going to our, like right here let's position and you can see this one for example swamp lake going directly to our encoder go to region and next going to our, our uh, region attention and it's kind of applied a general look okay some of different ones like these strings they use it concatenate so they add it together and if we look right here your separator is comma so it's meaning when you create it's kind of like construct prompt for us but beside construct the prompt if you notice it's also working with our regions like right here for example the old goblin with the body if you look on the regions where is located is 01041 so it's go right there one on the bottom and it's placed there our goblin kind of in around this area but beside that, it is using with concatenate and using with other things to create non-isolated but embedded object. And this is magic of this uh, region tension. It's a specify in which specifically area one, some um, your description, what you want it in this case, like a goblin. And then it will place it directly at that area. It's very nice when you create it like comic books, illustrations or other things and you want beside the precision on the character you probably want to have it um, in specific area different characters so in this case 
you can create it. We kind of look on some similar workflow before for st normal stable diffusion, but this with the flux, it's in incredible result. I mean, just look on the quality of this render. It's very stunning on details like hands and other things. This is not upscale and this is a resolution 137.6 by 1024. Um, as example, this is set in random noise. Right now it's going on a fix. You always can switch to randomize if you want to play around. But I will recommend as you're tweaking with this, maybe readjusting some elements, everything, just keep on a fix it. So the seed code is the uh, same. And in this case, um, they won't be changed too much. So you can adjust, like for example, instead maybe on the old plating, red faded sky. You can change to the um, like full moon example. So we'll just modify one. And I think full moon will be in around this area. So let's go ahead. We'll click on a Q and it should be generated now. There you go. And here we have an image you'll notice in the same place. We have a trees only with exception. Now we have a rare, uh, the full moon in our image this is nice i can see how this workflow can extend it again this is example workflow but in the future you can extend maybe included the image a reference included face swap if you need for more character consistency in other elements well this is one example but in this example we're using region boxes and it's hard sometimes to figure out where is this box is going so let me show you another workflow again this is a workflow. You can download it if you go down below right here. You see where the bricks. So just drag and drop this workflow. Um, I slightly modify here so we can preview a little bit better. And I will explain the reason why I'm doing with monkey and bricks and everything. So this is different because we don't have those regions, but we have it masks. And by the way, if you notice right here, you can add more regions if you need it. So as long as you're connecting additional regions, you'll notice you can add or remove those regions if you need it. Okay. And as well, you can modify here. Okay. So let's look at this one. The region controlled by mask and mask. It's an image you can create. I create, for example, in Photoshop. In this case, black color, it's a blocked. So it's a will be um, only this other transparency. It's where created. For example, if we look on this, you see where we have it mask going to our these regions. And if we look back to our conditions, go up our conditions value and value says red bricks here. So and if we look on an image, it will put it red bricks just in this area right there where is um, transparency and transparency on the bottom and on the side. And it's actually precisely what did you can see how it put it. Um, this is hard mask with hard edges. And I like to do this so I can understand um, how all this relation because this is beautiful example with a lot of concrete and you can see how they all interact together in this case. So right here, for example, you can see we have it copper pipes and copper pipes going on this area on top. So right there, this is mask two, which will apply to copper pipes. And also if we look um, steampunk monkey right here. There's our steampunk mon monkey. And we're going to this region mask, which is located right there image. And we can see this is our image. Notice right here, we have it also the Laura the one that is using actually in a, this example, if we look right here, this is our lower enable and it's creating overall kind of blending scene. So here's a bypass disable. We can con, uh, can re-enable that will be affecting a different image. Let me show you what's happening in this case. And you can see on a little bit better blending in this case with a pipes going over a red brick and we have a wooden plank. So it's kind of more combined all of the uh, work with um, combinations of all of this, um, our strings or our texts. Well, you don't 
restrict right now you can see how hard edge and they kind of embed it with hard edge you don't necessarily restrict with this you could also have it masks which have it gradients inside of blending so in this case you can see the i have it mask which is kind of blobs again remember black it's where we are avoiding so it's meaning we want to render this one mask and we'll look right here like red bricks should have it in a most area and other ones in different so if we do this let's go click to process and there you go you can see how well now with the soft edges is embedding um, Personally, I like to use it hard mask without ingredients when I need to define more areas where I want to place it. And I want to use it more soft and blending on my final image. Like, for example, instead cut off, you can see how much it is blending happened right here. And we have it our steampunk monkey with a brick wall on the end. Well, I hope you find this kind of interesting, this workflow. So link for them will be down below. Generally, again, let me point overall. You can add additional regions if you need it. I will recommend use it hard shape first when you try to define where it's going. Soft after general blending or lower you can enable disable. You also have an option to put it your width and height here. And in this case, it's 1024 by 1024. And as well, you have options for the random noise. Currently, it's fixed because we want to keep the same elements. And you have, of course, your um, basic scheduler, the standard things that we're using in a flux. You can always go and experiment with different LoRa, different diffusion models, see how they will work as well. But this is a default um, workflow. Thank you for watching. All links down below. Please click like, subscribe to support this channel. It's greatly appreciated and I'll see you next time.